been given here other than for uh, making a great decision in uh, choosing my parents. <laughs> um, so, in respect of uh, my father, who's been a volunteer for many years, started, uh, one of his first volunteering for Israel was in 1948 when he came and uh, assisted in building the first radar station. Uh, throughout the years, he's been uh, continually fighting the battles of Israel, and um, I certainly respect him for that. And I think that from his uh, room in Beit Protea, he continues to run his startup, which is a one-man Hasbara machine. <laughs> um, I'm very lucky that I didn't have to write the speech tonight. I've got a good writer for me. So this is what Morris uh, wrote, and he asked me to read it to you. I must tell you about Abe Cohen who was sitting at his desk, desperately trying to figure out how he's going to meet his debts. And the phone rang. A voice said, hello, is that you, Mr. Rothschild? Abe sighed, oi, have you got a wrong number? <laughs> I tell you that story because that is exactly how I felt when the phone rang and I was told that I was to receive this award. Oi, have you got a wrong number? <laughs> I must confess to being embarrassed by it, because when I look around this room, I see so many people who are more deserving. You, never, you know that I've never served on the Telford Executive, but a while ago I was privileged to be invited to participate in an ad hoc community, in an ad hoc committee dealing with the Telford Constitution. It was a worthwhile experience because during that period, I developed a huge admiration and respect for the Telford Executive in their unselfish dedication to the welfare of our community. I believe that every one of them is deserving of our appreciation. In my Hasbara activities, I'm constantly discouraged by friends who ask me why I waste my time engaging people like Castrils, Tutu, Bronfman, or Baynard. They will never be persuaded, they say. And I agree. But when I write an open letter to Baynard or whoever, I'm not addressing them, but the people who read their misinformed attacks on Israel, so as to enable their readers at least to realize that there is another side to the coin. If we don't bother to correct the misinformation, we have only ourselves to blame. When erstwhile friends believe the lies that they are fed and they turn their backs on us, there are times when even I feel like throwing in the towel out of the blue, uh, but then out of the blue, I receive encouragement by a letter from someone who cheers me up. And I ask for your patience while I read one of these letters. It's from uh, Andre de Klerk, and that's not the South African uh, de Klerk spelling, um, a, from Antwerp, and it's dated August the 3rd. And uh, Andre de Klerk writes as follows. Dear Mr. Ostroff, during recent years, my discussions with business associates and friends have increasingly turned to the Arab-Israel conflict. And I didn't disagree as they t tended towards blaming only Israel. Because of media reports, I had no reason to disagree, and I am still impressed by the articulate presentations of the boycott Israel movements. However, recently, when one of my friends presented me with some facts that he learned from your Second Thoughts website, I decided to see for myself. And I'm now writing to tell you that your articles on the reasons for the Six-Day War and the interpretations of Resolution 242, coupled with your explanation of the true aims of the BDS movement, made me aware of information that is not available in mainstream media. I've not become a Zionist, but thanks to you, I now think twice before accepting what I thought were self-evident truths about Israel's crimes, and I hesitate upon agreeing to signing petitions against Israel. Sincerely, André de Klerk, Antwerp. My father has asked me to thank you again for the great honor that you have bestowed on him.